Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God. I agree with Pastor Bobby. I wake up every day with joy, not because people, but because of God. Whether I'm in the dark of the backyard early in the morning or I wake up and the sun's up already, I thank God for my life, my health. I thank God that there's so many things that yet to be done. When you complain, you're telling God and sending a message that you're not content with him. Once you send that message, you already deactivate any favor he's going to pour out over your life automatically. Jesus brought this favor upon us. He gave us this hope. He gave us this great joy. In the last couple of weeks, I've just been pumped up with joy. You know why? Because I know when I'm done here, I know where I'm going. I know where I've been. I know where I'm at. And I know where I'm going. When you don't know where you're going, that's a scary thing. It is. Because if this is all you got, that's pretty sad. But while I'm here, I'm going to make sure I do everything I possibly can to give God praise, to thank Him for all He's done, to see His great work on this earth. And let me tell you something. Either way you vote, and you should be voting, otherwise you should shut your mouth. Seriously. Whatever you decide, that's your decision. But if you don't vote, you ain't got a voice. But whatever and whoever you vote for, you support what they indict to do, what they intend to do. And let me tell you right now, I'm a pro-lifer. That is the other party of conservatism. The other party of non-conservatism, which is called the liberals, let me share very plainly. They kill babies, endorse it, and they push it through their agenda with your money. So if you do vote that way, that's your choice. But let me tell you what, I see you as a baby murderer. Now, I know that's hard, but it's true, straight up the line. I was pro-life before I became born again. And you can squirm in your seat and you cannot like me, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're coming to an era change right now. There's a new dimension that's going to take place in our world. And while others are criticizing and pointing blame to everybody, there's a side that's saying we need to make it better. And I'm just going to say it. Vice President Pence gave one powerful speech and gave it to the point where I went, man, if he was running for president, I'd vote for him because he knows what this earth needs, and that's a healing on our land. The rebellion isn't caused by anyone but racist, rebellious people from the Bible to now. So I just want to say, vote your conscience, vote your life, but please vote. You've got to do that. That's part of what we're responsible for. And if part of your family is the other side, I'll pray for them. Seriously. Because I'll tell you, if it leans, God will not be patient and wait too much longer. I remember Pastor Benny Hinn said almost now 12 years ago, he said the Holy Spirit is not going to put up with what he's been putting up with for all these years. And he, number one was the abortion murder of babies. Number one on the list. And if you don't think those babies are in heaven, you're wrong. They're there. And so I want to encourage you. Vote your conscience. Don't let your emotions vote. You don't got to like somebody to know they can help everybody. You're not hearing me. See, Jesus wasn't liked by a lot of people, but he could help everybody. And that's what this message of joy is today. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, which means there has to be some fruit on the outside of you, not just waha, as we say, or just words there has to be fruit i got joy unspeakable joy why because i know my redeemer lives inside of me i know that he finds great joy in children loving him i know that he wants us to make the right choices but he won't force us he'll give us that freedom to do it and i love him for that i love god for that he doesn't force us i see a listen there's a he won't force you into heaven but i see a lot of people being pushed into hell so we got to make a choice i made mine a long time ago I choose Jesus, so I lean toward everything that leans toward his morals and standards. And that's what this is all about. Today we're going to talk about joy. Joy. Look at what joy means. Jesus on you. Oh, you're not too happy about that. I'm excited about that. I'm going to give you a little hint. I'm going to show you from the Old to the New Testament. And some of you might think just because you've got Jesus inside of you, you can act like an idiot on the outside. No. You have to have proof. Your proof is the evidence of your fruit. The Bible says, I'm going to show you all the scripture. You shall know them by their. That's how you know false prophets. Jesus says it plain. That's how you're going to identify so that you don't be misled by the words of someone that's not speaking truth to you. 
You got to know. You got to have joy. If you're mopey, dopey, opie, you'll go to heaven. But I assure you, your life on this earth will not be filled with the fullness of God. Why? Because joy is the fruit of the Spirit. And that tells me if you ain't got joy, you ain't got peace. If you ain't got peace, it's because you don't have joy. Now, you can love God, but right after love is joy. Right after joy is peace. So if you ain't got peace, you ain't got joy. God has an order, just like he gives us the setup of the fivefold: The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. You don't go apostle, teacher. You can't do that because God set it up already. So when he set up the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, 22, 23, and he set it up all the way down, he set it in order. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit. Nine gifts, nine fruit. Let's just sum it all. I'm going to quote him as I memorized what he said before he passed on years and years ago. He said, if the body of Christ at one time will let God activate the nine gifts in them and the nine fruit in them at the same time, he said the literal roof of the house of God would blow off. Now, I need our roof. You know, I need our roof. But, but that would be something to see, don't you think? Man, I'm excited about that. I've never seen it happen, and he hasn't either. That's because people get caught in themselves and not in God and helping each other. So I'm going to pray this morning. You get filled with joy. Unspeakable joy that won't go away. And it'll last you more than just one day. Amen. Because that's the fruit of the Spirit. And that means that's the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit in you. But listen, I'm going to show you from Old to New Testament. There's a difference between the Spirit in you and on you. And we need both. We need both. Some might say, well, if Jesus is inside of me, I don't need the Spirit on me. I disagree. Even Jesus, I'll quote him in the book of Luke. He said it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel, the good news. To make sure I set the captives free, he said. To let the blind see. He said it in the Word. He said, this is why Isaiah said what he said, the prophet. So that when I come, the Spirit of God is upon me. The Son of God said that. So I don't know about you, but I want the Spirit of God on me all the time. So that when they see me, they see Jesus. Amen? They see you, Brother Harry, they see Jesus. Amen? They don't see Brother Harry mad at Sister Kimberlin today. They see Jesus. Hallelujah. Not, not, I know you're not. Just saying. Because it happens, like Pastor Bobby said. Right? It happens. We get into arguments. Amen? The worst thing is to have a man that's insecure. Because he can't handle emotion. Women can because they live in it every day. We're trying to think, process, emotion. It doesn't work. So guess what? Move by the love of God. And you'll be fine. Some men are going, I can't handle emotion. Well, can, let, me, let me offend you. Come to my office later. Let me say some few words to offend you, and let's see how you react onto that. Because that's what happens, you know. <laughs> Sound effects. God loves us. Amen. And I just want to today just express the joy that I have when I see people come to the house of God. When I witness people worshiping. When I witness people smiling at each other, amen. When I witness people, I can actually see their face, thank you. And I, I just find great joy in all of that. Why? Because that shows me that you love God, you care for God, and you care for each other. That's an important part of life. That we have come to, come to a place where it's being taken from us in so many factors. But we can reestablish it. The body of Christ has power. So if Jesus in you and the power of God on you, Pastor Les taught me, there ain't nothing you can't do that God has called you to do. So let it rest in that. Amen? Be at peace. Look at each other and say, I got the joy. And I got the joy of the Lord so deep inside me, it's going to come out on you. That's right. See? So we all can share that joy. Amen? Praise the Lord. God is good. Are we ready to move forward? All right. Praise God. So I gave you most of the message already, so I won't take up all your day. Amen. You can be excited. Be excited about life. Be excited about love. Be excited about the Word of God. Oh, yeah, this thing is working good here. Oh, thank you. God bless you.
appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, thank you. Oh, for me? Oh. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I received that. Thank you. God is good. Well, you're taking your time, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, 2 Samuel 6.14 is where we're going. Okay? Y'all quiet in the house. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God is good to us. So this morning, I want to share in the power of God. Because you want the Lord in you and you want him on you. And there's a power in the word that's going to come forth. Very simple. And we're going to read it together when you're ready. You let me know you're ready. New King James Version. Real simple. This is about David. Remember David? Remember the ark came back into the city? When he came back into the city, he was full of joy. But let me tell you, in the word, if you read on, it says not only was he full of joy, but as soon as he danced, everybody else was filled with joy. See, sometimes we got to know that other people need to be filled with joy, too. And that's the scripture following this one, but I wanted to share this one. We can read it together. Say, then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing with, uh, was wearing with, huh? okay, with a linen ephod. Father, we thank you and bless you. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where the with came from, but mine says a David was wearing a linen ephod. But that's okay. We'll go with with because the ephod was with him. I want to show something very powerful when he danced before the Lord. The ephod is a holy garment of a priest. It wasn't some skibbities and bebbities. It wasn't some stuff he got from Fruit of the Loom. It wasn't some towel he jumped off of the shower and went, Oh, I better get out there and go do some dancing. It was an ephod. It was what he used in 1 Samuel 30 to pray with Abiathar the priest it was the power of his presence in the presence of God and it said that he was filled with joy and it says the people around him they got filled with joy you see that joy was there in the Old Testament that joy was there because somebody chose to dance now there were people criticizing when you choose to dance like that if you study deep enough and go in and I'm not saying you don't I'm saying if you go and look at it, it says in certain texts, if you look at the Dake's Bible, it says that he danced with his body not controlling it. That means the Spirit of God had control over his body and was moving his body probably in strange ways. Strange enough that Michael, his wife, from a window watching with her maids, in her heart, it says in the scripture, it says she despised him. And we know what happened there, but I'm not going to preach about that. But I want to let you know, we got to be careful when we criticize people just because you think it's shame or you think it's not uh, proper or you think it's so uncivilized or, you know, uh, uh, they should be more restricted. Uh, worship is not dealing with professionalism. You can hire pros to do that. We're here to worship the Lord. We are people just like people everyday life. We're here to praise the Lord with our instruments, with our voices, with our bodies. I don't care if he sway. You know, I, I, you know, listen, you can get mad at me if you want, but lately I can't stand still. Before I couldn't stand still, but I can't stand still. And I know I know, my wife used to be like before in the day when we first became friends, like, what is wrong with him? You know. Well, because I, 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 listen, I did a lot of things in the world that was uncivilized. Uncivilized. So I can get uncivilized for God in the manner of not hurting anybody but worshiping him. But this is what David did. He danced within 
his own physical body out of his control. The Holy Spirit was moving him. Now, I don't know what kind of dance he did. I really would like to see that dance. Amen. But it said it, it, said it in, the, in the Bible that way in Dakes and in the explanation of the, of the Word of God in Aramaic. Also, it says that it could not be imitated. It could not be learned. It's not like, you know, when you're dancing together, right? What he was doing was a one-time shot, a one-time power at that moment. Not that it couldn't happen again, but it couldn't be imitated because it was the power of God in him. Wait, actually on him. Now we got Jesus today. I'm going to move forward. Is that okay? I just wanted to open it up. Jesus on you, of course. So David had joy and brought him to, that brought him to dance in an uncommon way is what it says, to which he was not directing his movements. That's how it's written. The word in verse 15, 15 says that all the people had shouts of joy. They were filled with joy. God's word translation. Filled with joy because somebody was willing to dance. Somebody was willing to get excited. Somebody was willing to say, you know what? I'm going to dance. I'm so blessed the presence of God is here. That's all he was saying. And we can go back as to why he was so happy and, you know, the ark coming in. And that's a symbol of God's presence. But it says the people shouted. Their joy expressed on the outside of them because David expressed his joy on the outside of him I'm going to show you how I'm joyous I'm feeling it oh right there Uh huh. that doesn't help anybody that can't be transferred to anybody that's like a numb nut you know I'm just saying it overtook all of Israel and again the ephod was a priestly garment now, in those days, they used to say, that's sacrilegious. You don't put on the ephod. It's like wrapping the one with all the diamonds on top, you know, all the Jews. You know. I was telling the guys, he might have come out of the shower and go, give me, give me the ephod. No, he did it because it was a priestly garment in the presence of God, in the presence of worship, and knowing that that garment was what he used to pray, but he was about to worship now. He didn't do it by accident. It wasn't something that was hanging on a wall and I just used the ephod. He called for the ephod. If you look through the word when you read about David, when he was in a time of need and prayer, and he was so excited about the presence of God showing up, he said, man, I'm going to dance in my ephod. I'm going to dance in my priestly garment. I'm going to dance so that I don't care if people say, look, he's in his underwear. It's not my underwear. It's an ephod that looks like an underwear, probably like a big diaper. Who really cares? He didn't come out naked. People should just really tap in to the power of joy. So let's move on. Judges 6.34. It says this. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Now listen. Again, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he blew the trumpet and everybody followed him. Well, I'd like to blow a trumpet and everybody follow. Come to church. Follow me. Like, you know. They're not asking where we're going. It was the armies that were gathering. They were about to do some battle against the Midianites. Amen. But the point is the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he didn't do anything fantastic. He blew a trumpet. You guys got to get this. You know, you figure the Spirit of the Lord comes upon somebody. Oh, my God, we're going to do it. We're going to get through in a minute. Like Samson, right? You know that Samson is listed as the strongest man ever. Did you know that? Bible and outside. Because nobody recorded in time has killed 1,000 warriors by themselves. There was 800, there was 500, 300, but not 1,000. It's in record. Strongest man in the Bible. But the point is, he couldn't be that strong until the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Gideon couldn't do anything powered until the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And you're saying, yeah, but that's the Old Testament. No, just stay with me. Samson did great and mighty acts, miraculous acts. But remember in Judges 15:5. He finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey. King James says ass. He grabbed it and struck down 1,000 men. And then if you read on, he sang a song. I kill 1,000 men with one jawbone of one ass. Kill 1,000 men with one jawbone of one ass. Uh, uh, uh. Kill 1,000 men with one jawbone of one ass. Uh. He sang a song because he was telling them, listen, I didn't just kill 1,000 men. I did it with an ass. A jawbone of an ass. And then he said, and he released it, and he walked away. But it didn't happen until the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. This is the power of the Spirit of the Lord that comes upon you. Listen, it gets better. It gets better. Y'all doing good? Yes, sir. 
I was always excited. You like my song? Yeah. I made it up. It's pretty good, huh? Yeah, I know. I wouldn't record it because I don't know how many sales I'd make on that one, but YouTube might pick it up just for weird people. Amen. Do it again. I did it. I killed 1,000 men with a jawbone of an ass. I kill 1,000 men. Job of an ass. The wife said, no, nope, I have to end in job. Anyways, if you're watching, this is normal normal things we do in this church. In this thing. We got joy. We got joy. We got joy. We got joy. This is not a long message. I just want you to get it pumped up with joy, man. This is not a long message. It isn't. It's an exciting message for me. So we're going to move right along. Now we come to the book of Acts. See, I want you to know, it happened in the New Testament too. So we got to understand, the Spirit of God is in you. Am I correct? You're born again. Jesus filled people with Jesus in your heart. If not, we're going to get you there. But this is the point. Holy Spirit is in you, right? But what happens when the Holy Spirit come upon you? Well, let me give you a clue that happened at this time. Look at this, Acts 8.39. When they came up, now this is about the eunuch and Philip. And when they came up out of the water, the eunuch was with Philip, right? And they were asking, he was asking about the word of God and the prophet Isaiah and what he was speaking. And so now he explains it, but this is what they do. He says, what's stopping me from being water baptized? He said, no, there's some water over there, let's go. So this is where we're up to date to this scripture, 839. When they came out of the water, they were in the water now, say in the water. And look what happened. The spirit of the Lord caught Philip away and the eunuch did not see him anymore. And he went on his way rejoicing Oh, you didn't hear me. Now, if you read on, you'll find out that Philip ended up in another town, north. And I don't know about you, but I'd be like. But he didn't. He just went preaching. You know, I'm going to go preach over here then. See, it was not uncommon for God to do great and mighty things in those days. And that's actually what happened. The Spirit of God swept him away and put him in uh, Azotas, I believe it's pronounced, a city farther north than where he was. In verse 40, that's where the art, listen. It's a powerful thing when the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. So listen, you can be born again. But when the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, this is how y'all going to get raptured. Jesus is going to come back, going to come upon everybody. He says everybody will see him. And he's going to zippity do, Amen. And then you can sing the song with the job. No, I'm just kidding. No, don't sing that song because it wasn't us. But when you get to heaven... You can go, Samson, I got one song for you. <laughs> and I think you'd be like, let him in, let him in. No, just kidding, just kidding. I want to share about a young lady that's a Delta Airline flight attendant. And uh, the, the magazine is called In the Jet Stream, of course, right? Because there are flight attendants. And it's a Delta flight attendant. And she wrote this. It's a personal place where you can share what you'd like without being uh, labeled uh, a prejudice act against you. Uh, whether it's a negative thought or a positive thought. So she, she spoke, and so for your religious beliefs, you can't be criticized there either. So she took advantage of it. So this is a personal part of this magazine that anybody that's in the flight attendant business in Delta can write in. So the, the Delta flight attendant wrote this, and she actually wrote this. Jesus in the inside of me, working every day on the outside of me. So what that does is reflect who he really is in me and everyone gets to see it in my service my day and my attitude so she posted on the bottom who does your life really reflect might not be pretty big but for a delta airlines that's worked a lot of years over two decades she wrote this article and she said that the f you know that's the first time she actually wrote something like that but it's because she saw every other comment and all the other things that were being written and she gets on board that flight every day and thank the Lord Jesus. She, you know, she ministers through her work, her attitude. What she was saying in short is she had a smile on her face and she served with dignity. She didn't let people get her mad. Flight attendants nowadays, they're like sheriffs, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> right? What? You're not going to wear face masks. Get them off the plane. Off the plane. Offended. Offended. Oh, excuse me. Those pants are too tight, lady. Off the plane. I understand, okay, but I mean, seriously? Yeah? Halfway to your destination. Pilot, turn the plane around. This is the flight attendant. Why? Uh, because that man is giving me weird eyes. He's looking at me funny. And he said a few words I don't like. 
I, I, I sense a danger. Turn the plane around. They do it. They do it. Before, the pilots used to have the call. You know, I'm looking for the pilot to go, just sit down and shut up and do your job. Sorry, I'm really abrupt. That's why I'm not a pilot, probably. <laughs> but this is what reflected on this Delta Airlines. And I was blessed to read that article. I was blessed to come upon it. And it was actually written under a, um, when I Googled some things on the Bible and verses on the Bible, and it came out. That, that, that article came out with those verses and said, well, this is something you might want to look at. And so I'm thankful to the Lord for giving us that. Amen. Jesus on the inside blesses you. Simple. Jesus on the outside blesses others. That means Jesus on the outside of us and our expression and the things we do. You agree with that? Yes. Matthew 7.16 says this. You will know them by their fruit. Not by their possessions. Not by their brains. Not by their intelligence. Not by all their accomplishments upon the earth. Although that could be a fruitful thing too. But the fruit he's talking about is not that kind of fruit. It's who you are. How you love. How you care. How you treat people. That's the fruit he's talking about. He's also talking about false prophets at that time. And that's how you identify them by their fruit. Because they're going to have some fruit too. That's why the Bible always says you'll know them by their fruit. We're supposed to have love, joy, peace. I know this. You know you got joy. You got peace. I refuse to let any anyone control my mind. Which means you can put negative things on me. You can restrict me. You can quarantine me. You can do all these things. But I ain't going to let you get to me. Because once I do that, I've given in to the enemy. I've given in to the belief system that is not a godly belief system. And you don't have to agree with me, but I refuse. So um, I'm going to just share. Pastor Bobby will be traveling. Sister Kapoor will be traveling to see their mom, which I'm so grateful to God. And you know they're getting over there after all these months and helping mom out. And Mom, we love you. Dad, we love you. And Billions, we love you. And Keilani and the gang, we love you too. And those watching in Texas and Chicago, sis, I love you. i just doing shout outs because you know what? We've got to take every opportunity to tell people we love them, we care about them, and they're important on this earth. But uh, Pastor Bobby and Sister Kapoor will be going when they come back. They can go to work because we're essential. We are. Every church is essential, but sometimes they don't recognize this. But we have physical fruit in the county of Maui that designates under their ordinance 15 that we are essential. No, I do my homework. But when they come back, they have to quarantine. That means Pastor Bobby and Sister Kapoor won't be able to come to church. Just like Brother Harry wasn't able to. Just like Pastor Al wasn't able to because they quarantine. But that's where you don't let them get in your mind. Amen. You stream, you dance at home. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't care. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can go in my yard. Huh? Oh, and knowing Kuma and Tama. Elasa? Elasa a lot. Okay. <laughs> I love you all. God bless you. Don't let them control you. This is what Jesus is saying. He's saying that you will recognize true followers of me by the joy, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace. Listen, if you can only get those three, praise God, because they're important three. Because the next one is patience. Oh. Patience, and you've got to have tenderness. You've got to have gentleness. You've got to have self-control is in there too. But if you can tap into the power of God's love, which I believe you have, then we should find the joy within us that God has given us. Amen. Amen. And joy is the fruit of the Spirit, as I said i got one last scripture to share with you. Are you ready? Like I said, this is not a long message. i got joy. We sing the song, right? Yeah, we sing the song, but we don't live the song. we got joy, joy, joy. Walk out of the church. Yeah, shake that joy, joy, joy. Yeah, come on. Pastor Bobby was on mark. We cannot, listen. L let me tell you what. If you was to come up to heaven, and there was a gate, and there was grumpy people inside going, yeah, what are you doing over here? Would you be excited about entering in there? They wouldn't have that because it's not allowed. It's not allowed. There's no sickness. There's no disease. The people that didn't have legs got legs now. That's right. All disease don't exist no more. I'm serious. I know that exists. I've heard enough to know that exists because Jesus said it. Now, I have no idea of the greatness and the beauty because I've never seen it. But I know when I get there, I'm going to recognize it right away. Amen. You're going to recognize that light. You're going to know who they are. You're going to see people you know in the spirit and the soul is there with them. So there is memory and hold. I don't have all the explanations. I remember Reverend Ty shared 
about uh, the, the testimonies. Kenneth Hagin and Jesse Duplantis has them. I mean, there's powerful testimonies of men and women of God that have seen things that God revealed to them to encourage us, not to criticize them. Just because you never see. Sometimes you go, you, you go into a sleep, you wake up with a wonderful dream on your mind, and you go, oh yeah, just forget it. God ministers to us. You know why he ministers to us when we sleep? Because we don't listen. He gives us vision. That's when you're awake. Yeah? Vision is not a dream. I think I was dreaming. No, you weren't sleeping. You was awake. You just didn't close your eyes and you saw some things. That's what a vision is. But then when you go to sleep, He ministers to you because He wants you to know things. But sometimes so hard head, got to catch you when you're sleeping. Amen. I know I don't wake up with all the thoughts that are godly or mine. I know the enemy tries to put things in there, but he don't know what you got until you act out on it. Listen to me. Jesus on the outside of you got to work just as good as on the inside of you. Otherwise, people ain't going to know about Jesus on the inside of you. Because if you got Jesus on the inside of you and you're all happy and content about going to heaven, and on the outside of you acting like a jerk and treating people bad, they ain't going to see Jesus in you. They're just going to see you. Are you here with me? I'm not scolding you. I'm trying to encourage you. We got to have some joy in our step. I get up in the morning, even my dog know I'm happy. See, if I stay joyful long enough, I get happy. You know what happy is? Happy is a physical experience based upon my emotion. That's attached to my soul. That's why Paul, when he stands before Festus, he goes, I think myself happy. He's about to be persecuted. I think myself happy. That's right. Why? Because I got joy. Joy that won't go away. Going to last me more than one day. You know, come on. You guys got to get with the program. We're almost done. Ah. <laughs> Bobby's going, oh, no. <laughs> There's a small scripture in the Bible, meaning a short one, that says, there'll come a time that you'll make yourself a fool for Jesus. I think I was a fool most of my life. I just didn't know it. So with Jesus in me, I don't mind at all. And if it brings joy to people, isn't that what David did? Laughter is part of our joy. We should laugh in church. It shouldn't be so stuck up. We can't do nothing. There are a lot of times we got to understand that the church can become spiritually constipated. So you need a spiritual enema. The Word of God will clean it up. Okay, anyways. In the, in the, <laughs> in the closing scripture, Luke 4.18. I didn't hear. What was that, sweetie? Washing of the word. See, Pastor Bobby knows the, the word. So you might sit there and go, oh, that's not nice. No, it's a word. David said, how does a man cleanse himself? By the washing of the word. The sin of the word. Every, listen, you stick to the word, you get delivered. You stick to your opinion, it gets stinkier and stinkier. Stinkiest. I don't know if there's a word beyond that one. Anyways, Luke 4.18, this is what it says. Jesus said this, and this is what the prophet Isaiah said. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me. Anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. Freedom for the prisoners. Sight for the blind. Free for the oppressed. To proclaim. Going into the next scripture. To proclaim the Lord's favor. Which would be 419. So. Jesus the son of God. He is the whole power of God in the flesh. But he needs the father to come upon him. As Isaiah prophesied. To preach the good news. And he said, this is why the Spirit of the Lord has come upon me. To preach the good news. To bring forth that power. I don't know about you. Pastor Les, many, many years ago, uh, Charles Capps, uh, he writes a lot of little books. I have one that's called God's Medicine. I've been reading it for I don't know how long. I mean, forever. And he gave me a new one when the other one wore out. But in that, I never noticed. Yeah, you know, you ever read it and you don't, all of a sudden you go, whoa, I've been doing that for like two decades? And it says in there, in that scripture reading has scripture underneath, but it's a prayer and it says that the power of God is in me and the power of God is upon me that I might do all that God has called me to do see there's a balance between the power of God in you born again Jesus wonderful people of God and the power of God upon you to be able to help others so you might think can I be born again and act like I don't got the power of God on me yeah yeah, you can. Bad attitudes. Don't show no love. No, con no concern for courtesy. Amen. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. That's for somebody. 
but it's important that we understand. And I did look up that song, and I could only find a Pentecostal church, a Church of God church, actually, that there's about seven or eight videos just of them. And the pastor is excited. He's doing that Holy Ghost dance, you know. And he's singing that. Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside. That one, that's the words that follow it. This got to be changed. I sang it. Pastor Kapuni finished it. I said, must have come from Pentecostal church. Because we used to sing that song. It was there. Not often, but we sang it. I want to encourage you this morning. And we know the scriptures, but we got to believe them. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If you can have that joy, that brings joy to the Lord. And that's going to be your strength in the most difficult times. I don't care if you're standing at the airport and you're there, just smile at them. Facial recognition, go out. Mess them up. Stop that. I'm so happy to see you today. I'm glad I'm at the airport today. So happy today. Do it right. Recognize me now? You know, it's, but they're doing this. I heard it, uh, Brother Gino shared that I hadn't been to Zippy's in a while. They have facial recognition at Zippy's. Keep your burger. I'll go drive through. Huh? Zip pack or whatever it is, yeah, with the chicken and everything. It's so good. Yeah. Zip pack, surf pack. Yeah. Two chicken, surf pack. We know because we go, but I haven't been in a while. What are you doing with facial recognition at Zippy's? What, they got to recognize your order? No, I mean, I don't understand. Somebody clue me in. You know what this tells me? Total paranoia. Total paranoia, and this has come to, what is this? Uh, oh, it's a, um, oh, it's a, um, it's bling bling. I put that in my, oh, no, I better not. It's got glitter on it. I don't remember my wife coming. We got that glitter? Anyways, it just <laughs> see, y'all know that's why, right? Y'all know because your brain works like that. It works like that. Our brain works like that. I love y'all. I just want today to express one thing, the joy of the Lord. That's what I want to express because that's really where the joy comes from, his spirit in us, bringing forth that great, 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 great expression. And Jesus said it this way, the reason that I have been blessed by the spirit of the Lord, yes, to preach the good news, yes, to proclaim and the freedom of the prisoners and the lost. And, and it says actually for the poor, it says that in that word. But it's to bring forth the favor of the Lord. It says the year of the favor of the Lord. I believe we're in that year. It don't feel like it, don't smell like it, don't look like it. But I believe we're in the favor of the Lord. I really do. Why? Because that's who he is. Our external expression of what we believe should always be. I believe God got me. I believe God got this. Yeah, it's feeling kind of junky right now. I'm sad that my, my beautiful wife and my um, sister-in-law cannot come to church for those two Sundays, two Mondays, and two Wednesdays. Amen? But we do what we got to do. But I'm blessed that they get to be at mom. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful they're coming, mom. I'm so thankful because family is important, and we love family. So I want to share this in closing. If you let them stop you from visiting those you love because they're putting the restrictions, then you're letting them control your mind. Because your decisions are being based upon their restrictions. I'm not saying wrong or right. Amen. But I got to give a shout out to our lieutenant governor. He made a comment on the news last night. And he said this. This is for everybody. He said, if we allow the mainland people to come in and test and not quarantine, then we need to give the local residents the same opportunity and choice to make. Now, I just went, now that's fair. That's what I believe. I believe that's fair. You know? And then he added the truth. He said, and it's only 3% false positives. I don't want to be part of that 3%. Amen. So remember, facial recognitions. Amen. Mess them up. God is good. But why I'm sharing that is because we do have people, regardless of what their side is, that there are some that actually want and fight for the residents of Hawaii. And I'm glad that we have some people thinking, of, like Pastor Bobby said, sensibly. Because I don't think locals should be quarantined. I really don't. They're all passing the buck. Amen. And it ain't going to your accounts or what? I'm just saying. Listen, be joyful today. If you got somebody sitting next to you, just look at them. Just, I mean, that's a, but that's a, that's a definite look. Sister Melvin, I'm gonna look at you next time. You know. <laughs> but why I want you to look at them? Just look at anybody. It doesn't, you know, they don't have to be connected to you. Amen. They're connected to you through faith and God's love. But I want you to look at them, and just say, I got joy because you're here. 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 
I got joy because you're here. I got joy because all of you are here today. I got joy because you guys are watching out there. I got joy because God has got us. He's here with us, and he's here to give us all the love that we couldn't even hold on to to be able to share with us. I love you all. I just wanted you to be joyful, and I can't give that to you, but I can express it to you. That's something you got to find inside yourself. Put aside all the stupid that people bring on you and the things that surround us, and let God give you the power of his love. Find something. The song says it, right? I love that song. There ain't nothing. Ain't nothing like the Lord. Ain't nothing like him. That's right. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. May he watch over us as we're apart one from another. May he express his love for you in everyday life. May he show you the joy of his wanting you to worship and honor him. Because soon enough, one day we'll all be with him. And when that day comes, we'll rejoice. But meanwhile, while we're here, let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's express it to each other. Let's build relationships. Amen. Let's have children in marriage. And let's enjoy that time and, and be able to express, you know, you know i got to say that. Get, express our time together like that. Amen. Give him some praise. <laughs> Woo! Give him some praise at home if you're watching. Give him some praise in the hospital if you're watching. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Just let your joy, joy, joy. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Because Jesus on us will express our love for you in the public eye and everyone that sees us. We bless you this morning. We thank you this morning. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. If you're watching, most important thing is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So thank you in the house. But we're just going to take a minute. I want to express my expression of joy when someone comes to the Lord. The Bible says when just one comes, Revelation 19 multitude of angels say hallelujah praise the Lord that's what they say angels in heaven say that hallelujah praise the Lord so if you're watching if you never asked Jesus into your heart if you're in the house and you asked him already praise God you're saved you got Jesus in your heart but if you're watching if you don't have him in your heart if you're in the house and you never personally asked him in I'm not talking about religion or belonging to an organization or a club you know, it's about an expression of faith and knowing that Jesus loves you. But we got to express it not only from our mouth. and the Raising of your hand expresses and gives that expression that I am here and I'm going to receive you. So if that's you watching, just raise your hand where you are. God sees you. He's right there with you. And that joy is going to bubble up inside of you. In the house, you raise your hand if that's you. If you had not asked Jesus into your heart. Or if you just believe that you need to just pray that prayer, it's okay to just pray it. But it's important that we know this. Being born again is not about joining a religion or an expression of a legalism. It's about the true nature of Christ and His love for us. It's about the depth of God's love. So just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive you today in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. Simple prayer, not rehearse. If you got that prayer and you did receive Christ, please Give us a call. Send us an email. Let us know what's happening. And we're just waiting for you to contact us. We'll direct you to a church, hopefully, that's open near you. If you're in the community, come and see us. we got social distancing. we got everything we need here to bring forth joy into your life through the power of Jesus Christ. So we welcome you. We embrace you. And we thank you for tuning in today. Listen, if God ministers to you to bless and to be able to, um, to give a seed, and we just sowed, uh, we just sold $1,000 into Maui Food Bank. We also bought them lunch that day, and they were so excited, and they were so blessed to receive, and we're so blessed to be part of that. Amen? And their expression of wanting to uh, get about 34,000 people fed. Amen? And they had a shortage. So you're all part of that. You're all part of that, too. So sow a seed as God opens that door for you. If you're just watching on YouTube or whatever area you're watching, all you have to do is go to wordoftruthmaui.org. The website will punch up. It'll have a green button on the top. You can find it, press it, and it's a safe give, and God will bless you, and it's a good ground. It's good. We've got 24 outreaches. We bless God. We bless God in every expression. We bless God for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give a joyful praise the Lord. <laughs>